Hey, I'm Johnny, the Worley Weir guy, and three years ago I bought the island down at Worley Weir to promote the responsible and sustainable use of the countryside. Since I did that, I started taking a real interest in what goes into our rivers and how clean they are. That journey led me to understand a thing called a combined sewage overflow, which is where sewage treatment plants allow unprocessed sewage to flow directly into our rivers. One of the biggest culprits of doing that is Wessex Water on the River Avon. And today they've invited me to come and see their sewage treatment plant to find out what they're processing, how they're processing, and where it's going afterwards. So I'm not an expert in this stuff, and I want to share with you the things I'm learning today about what goes on in hope that you can open your mind as well to all the things that are happening within your sewer network and upstream from where you might swim or fish. I'm Matt Wielden, I'm Director of Asset Strategy and Compliance at Wessex Water. So this particular place is Trowbridge Sewage Works and we are serving the town of Trowbridge, about 80,000 people uh, and whatever they put down their sinks, their toilets, uh, off and off their roofs, uh, rainwater, it all comes to us here at the Sewage Works and our job is to go through it and treat it uh, both physically and biologically. Uh, we take things out of it like energy and uh, nutrients uh, and then we put it back into the environment. Okay, so this comes in on like one big pipe, lots of little pipes, how does it work? We call it a reticulation system, so small pipes to start with get to, to bigger pipes as they converge on the, the water recycling centre. So Matt, what are we looking at here? Where is this? So this is the inlet works, this is where we do the physical screening of all the sewage that comes in. So this is the first bit of the process? Yeah, before this preliminary treatment um, and the idea is to remove the inorganic stuff. So this looks like some kind of big sort of lift ladder thing and it smells a bit like a septic tank. Not like what I would have thought a sewage treatment plant would smell like, more like a septic tank. So not that bad, not that bad yet. <laughs> um, talk, talk us through this Matt, what's going on? So 25 mil screens mm -hmm. and there's a rake that goes in and lifts up and all the all the wet wipes you can see there then get lifted up and put into a launder channel. Is it like washed. a sieve or is it like a mesh? It's a load of it's a load of uprights. These teeth that you can see here, they're going in like this. And then they're elevating all of that rag up to the top. Yeah. And then they're dropping it in this trough. So it's like combing out mites from your yeah. kid's hair. Exactly. Yeah? Exactly. What might be in this pipe? Talk through so, everything okay. that comes so in. So it's mostly water. Okay? Over well, depending on whether or not it's raining or not, but it's, it's way over 95, 98% water. Uh, what also the customers put down are things that are inorganic, uh, as well as organic. Organic stuff is what you put down the toilet, uh, but inorganic stuff is what people also put down the toilet. Things like wet wipes, sanitary products, condoms, toys, nappies, credit cards, anything, we, we find it here. It's incredible what people chuck away down the toilet. So I've just been introduced to what comes out of the first stage of the processing of raw sewage. And behind me here is a skip full of what is predominantly wet wipes and sanitary products. I've been told that I shouldn't get too close to this stuff. That. So when you see these ads from the brands like Unilever or Johnson & Johnson with the nice white fluffy um, things that make, give you a nice clean sanitary life, um, this is what it ends up looking like if you put it down the toilets. Now they're going to try and compost as much of this as they can, but what's left, this bit here, is going to get burnt and set on fire. So when you're looking at these nice clean products, just remember what they end up looking like and where they end up in our waterways. People treat toilets like bins. It's like, I'll just flush it there, it's gone. It's gone. It's magically gone. It hasn't gone, it's come to us. But it's not gone, it's in Matt's water treatment plan, right? Yeah. And you've got to deal with that. Talk us through the kind of processes you go from getting that yeah. to something which you can put back in a river. Yeah, okay, so the first process is, is physical. We screen out as much as we can. I'm slightly concerned about the amount of sweet corn in there. Where yeah. might have that come from, Matt? Uh, from dinner plates. Okay, is it possible a lot of that might have dropped out of someone's ass? Yeah. Is that yeah, possible? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes. Definitely. So this is kind of like yeah. a version of just poo, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this yeah. this will be a higher percentage of organic poo than the, the other screens. Okay. Yeah. So this is basically a giant poo chew, yeah? <laughs> yeah, why yeah, not? Yeah. yeah? Uh, it also looks a bit like kebab meat. There you go. Yeah. If you eat kebabs. That is the most one of the most disgusting things. The second process is, uh, uh, is also physical, we settle stuff. So what we're trying to do is settle out the solids from the liquid. 
Yeah. And this is called a gravity belt thickener. Yeah. So literally, it goes over a very fine meshed belt, uh, and we've uh, added polyelectrolyte to encourage it to the solids to coagulate, and then we separate out the solids from the liquid. So have a look at this. So here, here it's coming in. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then this is the belt. Uh oh. So we go through a primary treatment stage, which is we slow it down. And then anything that's heavier drops out. We remove that, that goes off in one direction, or the liquid then goes on to the next stage, which is biological. So we use bacteria to break down the organic material in that liquid. That's called the biological treatment process. And then the next process, we then start cleaning up even further by using sand filters. Uh, and then that's for the liquid part, which then goes out to the nearest river. The solid part, we then put into digesters, where we keep it nice and warm. That organic stuff breaks down, produces methane. We collect the gas, and then we either clean up the gas and inject it into the grid, or we use the gas to burn and produce electricity to power the site. The solid stuff, uh, we call biosolids. We then remove a lot of the water from it, and then we take it out and sell it to farmers who use it as a fertilizer. Okay, so this sounds like an eco-utopia, but there's bad stuff going on here as well. So what happens to the really nasty stuff, the chemicals, the toxins, the pathogens, where do they go? So a, a lot of the pathogens will die uh, in the process, um, but you're right, there are some things that persist. Um, things like pharmaceuticals, uh, persistent organic pollutants, plastic microfibers. So that is a real issue that uh, as a society, we're only just realizing is a problem. We're only just measuring it and going, okay, so what's the consequence of that? This is a problem for our society. How do we tackle it? Do we tackle it here at the end of pipe or do we need societal change to stop producing these things and flushing them in the first place? And what do you think the solution is with these things which are new problems for society? Well, I, I honestly think um, prevention at source is going to be more effective mm -hmm. uh, for us as a society. But I also think end of pipe solutions uh, have a part to play as well. Okay, cool. Now, the big thing that interests me the most is combined sewage overflows. Yes. What you described sounds like a beautiful, efficient, upcycling model yep. of yep. perfection. But how does it happen that raw sewage ends up in the rivers? Yeah. What's going wrong here? So what's going wrong there is there's just too much rainwater getting into the sewers. So uh, what we do as a society and have done for the past 200 years is we've mixed surface water from roof runoff and patios and roads uh, with foul, what comes out of sinks and toilets. Uh, and when that was designed in the Victorian era, they didn't have a problem with sending the surplus into the rivers. Well, we're now understanding the consequence of that is it, it, there's a polluting load going into the rivers and suddenly we're trying to unwind kind of 200 years of construction and that's going to take time but it's necessary because we're learning that the consequences are impacting on, on rivers through high phosphate levels um, and that's affecting uh, algal growth and eutrophication uh, and that's not right. So it's a, it's a problem we've got to unwind. So you're saying that all the rain mixes with all the wee and poo and all of that is mixed together to be treated here? That's right. So on a busy day when there's a thunderstorm and the yes. rain comes bashing down, right. all of that mixed with everything in the toilet becomes your problem? Yes. Right. I think people would be shocked to hear that because I think we think that, you know, what goes down our toilet is very different from what goes on the street. It's all the same thing. Yeah, a lot of the time it gets mixed. Um, sometimes it's separate, mm. but often, uh, as you said, in combined sewers, it's combined. It's combining surface water with foul water, and that's a really big problem. We've got to try and separate the two out. Uh, and that doesn't happen here, that happens way up in the network, up in the catchment. So most of the time this is doing its job really well with yes. the sewers. Yeah. How much rain does it take for this to suddenly become useless and everything is washed straight through it? Well, it, it continues to treat everything that goes through it. Mm -hmm. We have to limit what goes through it because it can't take everything. So that's when we have to spill out and discharge into the environment. Um, I don't know actually. Johnny so someone it's okay. So someone might say someone might say, why don't you just get a big tank and yeah. hold all this stuff until your plant's not so busy? Why can't you do yeah. that? So we do that and a lot of the time we build big attenuation tanks just kind of just hold it back and then we can then treat it later. The problem is there's just too much. Uh, and attenuation is not ideal because it's still you've still got a large carbon footprint to treat it all. Actually this stuff is clean enough when it lands on the roof to go straight into the river. Mm but we haven't got the network that enables that to happen. What we want is to recreate that, so we don't have to treat all this clean water that's mixed with the fowl. What would be your ideal situation? How would the system work in a perfect world? If you could control yeah. everything and overnight rebuild everything, yeah. what would it look like? Every property would have two drains, 
One would take surface water, one would take foul. So that's the infrastructure, a separate uh, rainwater and a separate foul water. Yeah. What if you could control the world and change what went down that toilet in the first place? What would yeah. you get rid of? So sewage works were designed to treat what's organic. The, the problem is nowadays is that we're putting stuff down there that is not just poo and we. And so as a society, we are unwittingly polluting the environment by what we flush. So these surfactants, the antidepressants, yeah. all these chemicals, where are they going and what's happening to them? They're going into the environment and they're staying there. The environment being? Rivers. Rivers, seas, yeah. oceans? Yeah. Then what, what happens then? Well, they, they're affecting our ecosystems. They're okay. affecting the ability for, our, our, for, for nature to, to thrive. And we're, these are the kind of things that society is just about learning. The, you know, what's the impact of, um, of these pharmaceuticals on our fish life, on our, on our plant life? Yeah. Does it worry you, this stuff, what we're putting in the environment? Yes, it does. Yeah? yeah okay. Yeah. And what I think because are... as we learn more, yeah. we find out more problems. So that's been really interesting. There's some good people working here. They've got loads of fancy gear. But the fact remains is they are still letting raw sewage flow into our rivers. This facility is pretty sophisticated, but there's a lot of things they could be doing. They could have bigger water tanks to attenuate the water flow. They could be doing a lot more to make it so that we don't combine sewage with storm overflow. And they could also be applying UV filtration to the water outlet, so the water that does go into our rivers has less, less pathogens in it. I think these guys are doing some good work, but this is only one step in the right direction more money needs to be spent on our sewage treatment plants. We also need government to put legislation in place to stop things like builders combining sewage and stormwater. And we also need to get rid of things like wet wipes and sanitary products, especially if they end up going in our waterways. So I feel like we're going in the right direction with our movement for, towards cleaner rivers, but there's a lot more to be done. And I think the water companies are gonna play a major role in that, and they need to be doing a lot more than they already are. 